I am going to start painting Descent, Legends of the Dark. I have made a video where I painted act number one, meaning this bad boy over here. And now I'm going to paint number two as well. And I just can't wait. First, we need to prime them. I have set up my minis here now and they are ready to be primed. What I use when I prime is the Army Painter Primer. I have two different here. I have Matte White and Barbarian Flesh. The ones that are going to have the flesh color will of course be primed with Barbarian Flesh. And the ones that do not have normal human skin color will get the white one. Now the fun part starts. This is where we get to shape these for a long, long time. About one minute. When I have shaken this bottle for about one minute, I make sure that I am in a well-ventilated area, meaning outdoors. And now I shake it just a little bit more to make sure that I'm really done. And now I need to spray my minis with a distance of 30 centimeters from the miniature. And I do not completely soak them in primer. This should just be quick strokes over and by the minis so we get a good primer layer. That was the first set. Now I do the same thing with the white primer. Now we let these minis dry for quite some time. I'm gonna leave them here for over the night. So tomorrow, well, they are hopefully ready to start being painted. The miniatures have now been primed and they have dried overnight. So I am actually ready to start painting these small, cool little minis. I mean, these look just so, so badass. Fantasy Flight Games usually have quite cool minis and they are actually usually quite easy to paint as well. So I'm going to start painting these. What I usually do when I paint minis is that I take one of a kind, I like the enemies here, there's usually several of the same kind and then I just paint those in a row. So if there's four of these, I will paint all of these fours in one row. But what do I use when I paint minis? Well, let me show you that. To my help to paint miniatures, I of course have different size of brushes. And these are small, big, you know, there are different sizes of course, but the one that I will use the most is actually this size right here. And this one is not that small as you would think it would be, it's actually quite large. The pencils I have is from Army Painter and you could probably use any pencil you would like to, but I like their pencils. But this is the size that I will use the most on the miniature. When it comes down to the really, really, really small details, I will of course use a brush that is a, just a little bit smaller and a little bit more pointy. But other than that, these bigger brushes are actually what I will use. Because I am using speed paints from Army Painter. I got this huge mega set here and I got this smaller most wanted set here. Of course you do not need all of these colors. You would do with a lot fewer of them, but Army Painter have sent these to me so why not use them, right? These are awesome. And this is why I am using just a little bit of a bigger pencil because these colors here needs just to be soaked up by the brush a little bit more than just normal miniature paints. But these here will cut down the work time for you just so much. Because these will actually have the layer that you need on the miniature from the start. I mean the base layer, the cover layer, but they also have washes inside of them. So this is a one coat solution that will just help you so, so much. Besides the paint, I of course also have this little palette here that I will, I do not have a wet palette, I just use this, I think that works just fine. I have some water, of course you need water to clean out your pencil, but I also have this thing here. And these ones are great to hold your miniature. In this way you do not need to have your hands on the minis, you can easily paint the miniature and twist it and turn it around to get into all those little nooks and crannies. Of course you don't need this, I mean you could just hold it in your hand, you could basically just take a stick and have some sticky stuff on it and hold it on the stick as well, but I just think that these are just a little bit easier and you can adjust them to different sizes and everything. So that's what I'm gonna use, pencil, this little holder here, 
water and of course some paints from Army Painter. Uh, I have primed the minis. Now we're ready to start. I am going to start to paint these enemies right here. These warrior, uh, warrior queens or whatever they are. They got a little crossbow and they're looking really, really nice. Now, what you should do when you start to paint the mini is to start with the bottom layer. Because it's just easier to paint that first. And if you make any mistakes, it's easier to correct that later. Because if you are painting the top layer and then the bottom layer and you make a mess on the top layer, well, you have to redo that. But if you take the bottom layer first, and you accidentally paint the top layer, well then you're going to paint that anyway later, right? So now what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to take these, there are four of these here, and I'm going to paint one color first on each four, and then I'm going to move on to the next color and use that one. In that way I don't need to shift back and forward with the different colors. I probably need to do it every now and then anyway, but not as much. So let's get started. On this one I am going to choose the palette bone color here. Before you start to paint, you should shake the paint, just as we did with the primer. And if you listen closely, you can hear that there is a little metallic ball in this little bottle. And this will help you to get the little pigments inside the bottles really flowing around. And you need to shake this really, really good for about 30 seconds to a minute or until your arm starts to hurt. The thing about painting miniatures is that the more miniatures you have done, the easier it will get. You will get into the right mode, you will be able to just draw out the lines quite easy, and after a little while you've just got the feeling in your hands, and the pencil will just, well, pretty much just flow by itself. And after a little while it will be like painting by numbers actually. It's not that hard as it looks like. And I want to tell you that I am not an expert in this. No. I am just a guy that really enjoys painting miniatures and I want to show you that anyone can actually do this and get quite a good result if you just use the right tools. So when you start painting you need to soak up the brush quite a bit. So you get a good layer of paint on your brush. And then you should simply just drag your little brush here over the miniature and make sure that you cover it completely. I have painted the skin and bones on this first warrior here. Now before you move on to your next miniature, just make sure that you have covered all the pieces that you wanted to cover. Because you're doing yourself a favor here, you don't want to go back and redo everything later. Make sure that you have got whatever you need to do, and then we simply take this one off, and we start to paint the skin color on the next one. This is the way I will do it until I have completely painted the skin color on all of these four warriors. Then I will go on to the next layer. That was these four little enemies here that I have now done. I am not completely done, I still have the base left. But I usually go back and do the base on all of the minis at once later. There are a small little things here that I will need to go back and just fix, but for now I will let these dry completely and I am going outdoors to take some air and be back for a new round tomorrow. It's a new day, it's a new dawn and I am getting ready to paint some enemies now again. This time I will paint these little skeletons here and I will go about this just as I did with the other ones. I will start at the bottom layer and then move up painting each mini in each color first, going back, starting over. And since these are skeletons, I will paint their little bones with palette bone. Let's get started. Again, we soak up the brush with a good amount of paint, but we should just remember to never dip the entire brush. We don't want paint all the way up to the top of this brush part, because that will make the brush in the future spread even more. So try to dip it to about two thirds of the brush, but have a good amount of paint on it when you dip it. And then again, we simply just go over the little miniature here, making sure we cover all the pieces. See, I almost had too little paint here. We should have even more. You should really run down on the miniature, pretty much covering it for us. As the paint will run down, it will also run into all the little nooks and crannies and create that shading effect that we want to when it has dried. And you can see here how the paint 
runs in between his skeleton toes. It really covers quite quite good by just a little brush, by just a little brush stroke. So if I put it up here and just let it run down, the color will run down in between all the little toes and spaces where it really needs to cover, making this paint really easy to run with. That was the skin color of these little bone warriors here and this went really really fast. We're talking five minutes maximum painting all of the skin color on or bone color on these little warriors. Now I'm gonna go on with their armor here and I am thinking that broad sword silver would be a good fit. Uh, so I am going to start to paint that because as I can see when I look at this, this should be the bottom layer. So let's get started. Every now and then when you paint, you are going to mess up. But what you can do is to just take a little piece of paper and try to gently just brush off what you have just messed up. In that way you can easily get over the part in that way you can easily get rid of the part that you do not want and simply just start over again. And remember, it's not the end of the world. I mean, when they have dried, you can always just paint another layer on them. To make the metal have been painted and now we go on to his little cloak here or whatever it is he have on his uh, back here, but also little thing going down here and in front of him and I think that they should be red because I painted these little witches here with a red color so why not give like the enemies the red shade of danger right slaughter red it is for the cloak or scarf or whatever it is on the little skeleton and time to shake again when you pour up the color you really do not need that much color this little color here will last a long, long way, probably for all the four miniatures. And as you can see here, this color just covers up greatly. I really just need to push the, the brush into the, the sides of the little metal pieces here, and the color will just run in and be placed where it should be placed. I don't have to put down too much time to get the color into all the nook and crannies because the color itself is so fluent that it just flows in there. And that was the four skeletons. I have used some metal paint, some dark wood paint here, some slaughter red. I am almost done with them, haven't done the bases just like I have do on the other ones. But I will put these to the side now because I feel pretty happy about them. And continue with the next minis. I am ready to go on with the next enemies here and I'm going to do these little knights here I guess this is a knight in shining armor uh, I thinking and I'm just gonna do the armor here with the broadsword silver again and uh, I don't know about the fabric yet I'm not that sure about what I will pick there but uh, we'll see when I get there there were a lot of metallic on this one of course it, it's a knight right so he has metallic suit but I'm thinking that I want to do something with the rest because he had this cloak and everything around him there. So I'm gonna do that in a little bit of different color. And I'm actually thinking about using Beowulf blue. So when you're doing these little details here that's on the border to something else or maybe if you're doing the eyes, I usually take my arms and I press them into the side. In that way I get a little bit more stability in my painting and my hands and everything won't shake that much. And again, I have a good amount of paint and I simply just start to paint his, uh, well, whatever this is, his helmet hair, I would call it. As you can see again, this color here just flows so good on everything. I basically just have to draw my pencil straight over and it will just run into all the little pieces where I want it to run into. It's just so perfect. I am feeling quite done with these for now. Uh, there were a lot more details on these small warriors here than I anticipated But I feel quite happy with them and now I'm gonna go in and take a rest for today because I've been out here for hours And it's time for me to sleep so I will come back tomorrow and keep on going I actually went back out yesterday to paint these little lizard dragons here or whatever they are the problem here is I'm painting this game before I have actually played it. So some of these characters and 
creatures. I don't really know what they're supposed to look like. So on this one, I just assume that it is fire that he has on his back. But I don't know. But anyway, I think they look freaking cool. On this one, I used the charming, charming chachachos. I, I'm really terrible at names, but that's what I think it's called. And I actually used the fire giant orange as well. And this one is from the speed paint mega set here. I have a lot of different sets from Army Painter when it comes to paint, so I took that one from there. And now I'm thinking I got I got the speed paint here, and I got the fire orange here in front of me. So why not go ahead and paint the little phoenix, the fire orange, fire giant orange, and we got a little bird here. And this one here, I'm thinking that I'm going to start with the, the fire up here and then we go down to some type of smoke down here. At least that's my idea, but I'm going to see what's going to happen here. And on this one, I'm just going to smash on the paint. You know what? I'm actually, I'm going to take a bigger brush here. I'm going to take this one instead. This is a little bit bigger. So we can fill that up with a bit more color. Look at that, it's good and filled. And now we can just smash paint right on this. This one I won't go down in that much details. I will simply just do what has to be done, which is covering the bird in flames. That was the bird. That took literally minutes. I mean, one minute maybe. It took me really, really, really fast. But then again, I could have done more details on this one. But some of them, you know what? I, I just want to get this tabletop ready. That's what I want. That's what I'm doing here. I want to do this fast and I want to make it look better than it is from the start. And that's what I'm doing. Now I'm going to do the smoke here. And on that, I think I'm going to take the holy white. Because that kind of looked like a little bit smoky flavor-ish. Smoke and fire is pretty much what I suck the most at. I am not good at doing smoke or fire or anything like that. If it's not already mixed up, I'm not gonna do it a good job. So here we do the holy white for smoke. I have been painting now for about two hours and I am getting tired, but I have gotten a lot of work done. I've done these little, I don't know, what is it? A vampire maybe? And then I've done these little lizard, like I told you. I've done the phoenix and I've done almost these little uh, dragon type bell carrying characters. Uh, I've also finished up some bases on some of the nights that I didn't do before, so I have done a lot of things during these two hours. Now I'm getting tired, so again I will go inside, I will take a little nap, or I will sleep. That's what I'm gonna do, because it is late now. But I am of course gonna come back and start all over tomorrow. I have completed all the enemies. Well, almost. I still have this big bad boy. Or girl left but I am going to save this one to the end now I'm gonna go on and paint the heroes but I won't be painting the heroes like I painted the enemies when I paint the heroes I will paint one hero to the fullest and then I will go on to the next hero when I painted the enemies I kind of went a little bit wild and just chose colors that I felt fit that enemy but when I'm gonna paint these heroes I will actually be looking at these player sheets here and follow their color scheme just as much as I can. Because I just think it makes sense to make the heroes look kind of like they're supposed to look by the game. I'm gonna start off with the little cat hero here, Chance. And of course, Chance fur is a little bit grayish as we can see on the player card. So I will actually be painting Chance in the holy white here because that is like a white grayish shade. And of course, we need to shake it. So I have painted this one with the grayish now, and I have of course been completely stupid here. I should have primed this one white, but instead I have primed this one in uh, the skin color of Barbarians. So I will have to let this one, the first layer here, dry, completely dry, and then I have to paint it more gray. But now I will go on with the purple clothes instead. And for the purple clothes, I will of course be choosing Purple Swarm. On the armor here on Chance, there are some other details, as you can see, but I will paint this purple first, and then when this has dried, I will go back and then paint those details in silver, I think. 
That was the, the skin color and the clothes of this one. Little chance here, looking great. Let's see if I can get focus on him. Look at that, looking great. Like I said, I think I will have to just go back and redo the the fur on uh, on Chance here. But I will have to wait until it has dried just a little bit. But it, it's actually turned out better than I thought. Now I will go on and just paint his little weapons. You see he got some weapons there on, uh, on his belts and around his chest. We'll just paint them in... Uh, broad sword silver here and then I will go on and paint the pillar and the base because when I do the heroes it's just it just makes sense to me to do the base as one so the whole miniature is actually completed once I put it down. Chance here is almost done but as you can see here the base did not turn out that great either so I will have to go back and cover that as well. This here barbarian flesh primer was actually a lot harder to cover with some colors than I would have had imagined so i will have to have this one dry up where for a good bit and then i will have to go back and simply cover up some of the areas that we, again but the fur did actually look better once it had dried a little bit than i anticipated at the start so maybe the base will become better as well once it have dried i doubt it though but we're gonna see now i have painted chance and i will go on to paint this one right here I have been painting for quite a few hours now and I have gotten a lot of minis done. As you can see here on the table, I really only have Bryn left. This is the last hero I have left, but of course we also have the big bad dragon. This one is huge and I can't wait to do this one. But now I'm gonna go in, go to sleep and come back tomorrow. I have almost done all the heroes now i just have the beard left on my little friend right here once i have done that beard well all the heroes and enemies are almost ready we only got this big one here left and i am of course going to paint this one purple because well it's what the box says so i'm gonna go for that but we got a lot of other details here we got some armor on the back we even got a little building down here that we need to paint so I can't just go all crazy, but when I paint the skin color on this one, I will of course use a little bit bigger brush because, man, this one is huge, right? Now, on the heroes themselves, I did not paint the eyes. Because, well, I just don't feel like it. It takes a lot of time. It is a detail that actually adds a lot to the miniature, but it also does take time and energy. But if you want to paint the eyes, you should always start with the white in the center. And then you should do black little dots in the middle. When you have done that, you can cover up any misses that you have done around the eyes with skin color. I am gonna go with the purple swarm here on this big huge dragon. Now I have been searching online and I haven't really found any pictures on how this one actually looks. So I will pretty much just have to go free-handed here and just see what happens. Now like I said there are a lot of armor and I think I'm just gonna go with regular metal paint on that armor but on the dragon itself I'm gonna go with the purple swarm here. So uh, let's just get crazy and I've even taken an even bigger brush because this one is pretty, pretty big. So before you go crazy with this one, I would encourage you just to take a look at all the little details here because there are a lot of details. There's a lot of little armor everywhere up here on the wings. So you just don't go all crazy before you actually start to paint it. And we have some bones here, but I think that I am just gonna go purple all the way. But of course on these little bone parts out here and on his nails and horns, I will go with another color than purple. But hey, let's see where this takes me. And again, we start from the top of the mini, going down. So when you paint these big surfaces here, you of course have a lot of paint on your brush. But that also means that the paint will run down, like it have done here. It'll run down on this little hook down here, or nail, or whatever I should call it. But don't freak out, it's not over yet. We can simply just wipe it off with a piece of paper and when we come back later, we let it dry and then we'll cover it with another color. And it's not that bad, you know, we can fix everything. That was a lot of purple. 
uh, once you have painted this one purple, you really need to go around the miniature and make sure that you got every little detail because there are a lot of little places for the color to run into and also miss on the way. So be careful before you like clean your brush and move on to a new color because you want to get this done before you move on. But now I feel like I have gotten all the little spots, so now I'm gonna do the armor. And I think I'm just gonna do basic silver on this one. On the silver here I use just my normal size brush here because there are a lot of spaces where you can go wrong if you use a too big of a brush. But as you can see here the silver just covers this nicely. It runs down quite easily. All of the minis are now painted. I have been painting for a few hours to get this done. I'm not gonna lie, but I'm quite happy that it is done now. Each of these minis, let's say that they took about half an hour each, maybe give and take some, but now they are done. But we have one more thing that we need to do, and that is to warnish them. The warnish will work as a protective layer for our minis. And we do want to protect these, right? I mean, we have put down a lot of work to get them done. So now we need to protect them. Just like the primer, we need to shake this really, really good for about 30 seconds to a minute. And then we spray them just like we did with the primer. About 30 centimeters away from the miniatures, and we need to cover them completely. This will give them a protection layer so you can play with them in the future without fearing the paint going off. But of course, before you do the warnish, we need to make sure that the miniature is completely dry. And there is a bunch of different warnishes out there. I use the anti-shine matte warnish because I like matte things. I don't like shiny things. So if you want your miniatures to look more shiny, well then this is not it. I'm done. I have painted all of the miniatures from this big awesome box. And now I am ready to start playing the game. Will these miniatures win any awards? Well, no, probably not. Will they go down to history as the most detailed minis? No, no they won't. But are they tabletop ready? Yes, yes they are. And this is my whole point with this video. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner, if you're advanced or elite or whatever you are in painting miniatures, it will still look better than what it did from the start. I mean, it doesn't matter if you get every detail absolutely 100%. It doesn't matter if you put down 10 hours, 20 or 50 hours in this. It will still look better than what it did from the start. And even me, a middle-aged, bald man that I never have painted anything in my life before, managed to make this look pretty cool and pretty okay. And absolutely 100% tabletop ready. There you have it, my friend. That was me, Richard Genders, painting Descent, Legends of the Dark, Betrayer's War, and man, I am happy. I'm happy that I'm done, but I'm also happy about the process. I mean, I have like different steps. I have the beginning process where I prime and start to paint, and I'm really happy about what I'm doing. Then somewhere midways, I start to regret my decision to paint them. But now I have started, so I need to keep on going. And when I finally reach the end, I'm super happy again. And you will probably feel the same way. The only way to get through this is to keep on painting. And this does not take that long time, as it sounds. I mean, yes, it does take time. But here we had about 25 minutes or something like that, and each miniature took about half an hour. And if you use the right equipment, it will shorten down your time a lot. I mean, in the Army Painter Speed Paint, you have the wash, you have the shadowing, you have everything at once. Will it look super, super detailed? Well, not. But you can do more details if you want to. For example, here I did not do the eyes. If I had done the eyes, it would look just a little bit better. But I just wanted to get this on the table so I could start playing the game. If you want to know more about the game, or maybe the paints and primers and so on, there will be links down in the description, so be sure to check them out. If you want to see more of my content, well, be sure to follow me on all social media. But most importantly, my friend, please remember to keep on spreading that board gaming love I know you all have. Peace out, my friend.